Now, say, you know, in, a, in, a, in today's competitive world or uh, where people really think that you need to uh, cut, you know, there's cutthroat competition and you're working towards it and then there's negativity and say if someone is, for example, I'll take an example of myself, I believe in completely just working towards your goal and being positive about it and not looking around on what's happening or what people are doing. So my question is that, is so this, there's a certain positive energy that is to, that that you are surrounded with. Does negative energy is does negative energy really affect a positive energy? Like you know, people talk about evil eye or drishti that in our Indian culture is is so much, which I don't believe in personally. But you know, you hear from your uh, relatives or people around that if you've done a good job, there's drishti. You know, you should come and do this puja, and there are rituals that are followed. So. So, can a negative energy harm a positive energy? See, uh, <coughs> instead of looking at this as positive energy and negative energy, the same energy can function positively or negatively. What is… if something works favorably for me, I say it's positive, if it is work works as a detriment, I say it's negative. But it is not essentially negative or positive. It may be, what is darkness for you is light for a whole lot of creatures on this planet, isn't it? Electricity is right now doing positive things to us, so if you stick your finger into it, it does something else to you. It is still positive as far as the… you touch the positive only, not the negative <laughs> So, what it does, is simply dependent upon variety of things, the way it arranges itself. So, is there something like you are uh, surrounded by some negativity which affects your body, mind, energy, everything? Yes, there is. <laughs> this is something, uh, you know, uh, just three, four days ago, they were giving me the studies they have done in the… in our yoga center, we have a rejuvenation center. We have called… we have what is called as Klesha Nashana Kriya. Sorry, what is it called? Klesha Nashana Kriya, that means a Kriya which destroys impurities. To put it simply, few of them knew what to do, maybe previous generation knew gradually, they just started doing like this. But if you observe a person and do it in the right way, it does certain things. So we have a whole scientific process. How to do this? Just the same thing. See, it, today let's say you're very exhausted or… Let, rejuvenates yes, you Yes, rejuvenates you in some sense. So this is a water wash. Similarly, we can do wind wash, we can do fire wash, we can do substance wash like with grains and other things we can do. So what this is, is like a fire wash, but it needs to be done in a certain way. Water can touch our body, water can touch our skin, there's no problem. Fire cannot touch your skin, it needs to be done in a certain way. They give me this study report which is amazing. There is a, you know, a record of children who have come with this ADD and this kind of problems. Twenty-one Kleshanashanas, they're completely free of medication and fine. No medicine, no any kind of treatment, nothing. Just fire wash twenty-one times in twenty-one days and they come out clean and no medication, nothing, they're fine after that. There are any number of records. I was just looking at this four days ago and it's amazing. But this all our grandmothers wanted to do, they did not just do. I remember many times, when I came home from outside somewhere as a little kid, my mother would look at me and say, I think you need drishti, we must take. I said, come on, rubbish, I don't want any drishti. <laughs> but she wouldn't let me, she would make… you know, I would be running around, she'll… still she would be doing yeah. something. I don't know whether it worked or not, I was too… <laughs> whatever mentally, too against all those things. But today there is proper record of what it does to people, tremendous things it's doing to people. That means it does exist. It where... does. I mean, there's no question about it. It does. The question is, do you know how to do it properly? 
we were thinking of uh, after six, uh, looking at this, I spoke to the people who were doing it and said, we must give large-scale training to people. We must even produce videos and put it out so that everybody knows how to do it in their homes. Because this is such a simple thing that anybody can do at home and it has tremendous impact. So it's… so that means it's that simple for someone to just put drishti on someone and then they suffer? Like say in terms of ailment or you know like they say take off drishti, say suppose I don't believe in it at all and I believe like same like you said your mother would run around you like uh, and you didn't believe in it, I don't believe in it and I feel that if you're a good person, these things can't harm you. If you're doing your things the right way, uh, how well, can someone… I want you to know a lot of good people go through works in this world. Sorry, go through? A lot of good people go through terrible works in this world. Yeah. This yeah. is not a movie, this is real life, yeah. where a lot of good people suffer like hell, isn't it? Right. This brings to the first thing, that that means good things don't always happen to good people. Oh, not at all. <laughs> because… Unfortunate. I must tell you this, a lady was driving in Minnesota. She had a flat tire and she got out, she had never handled a flat tire. Have you ever? Uh, no. No? <laughs> no. Once when my driver was with me, so I was… <laughs> I was okay <laughs> So she had never handled it. She was in a party clothes with high heels. She struggled, she put the jack lifted, she was terrified because she had parked in front of a mental asylum and there were all kinds of strange sounds coming from inside. So with great nervousness, she somehow took out the wheel, unbolted, took out the wheel, then she got the heavy, you know, uh, the spare tire, she got it out of the car. With great difficulty carrying, she had put the four nuts in a hubcap. You know, these days there are no hubcaps, they used to be hubcaps. And uh, tottering around on her high heels, she stepped on the hubcap and these four nuts flew in four different directions. Now she did not know what to do, no nuts, how to fix the wheel. She just stood there dejected. Then from the third floor of the mental asylum, a young man who was there called her, Hey lady! She looked up terrified. He said, see, take out one one nut from the other three wheels and fix this wheel. With this you can easily drive to the next gas station and there you can fix it up. She did just that. Then she looked up at him in gratitude and this she said, you are a, such a smart young man, why are you in this place? He said, I may be crazy, I'm not stupid. <laughs> So, people may be good but they're stupid. Stupidity, you pay. Stupid means just this. There are many levels of stupidity but the worst kind of stupidity is just this. Your own thought and your own emotion doesn't take instructions from you. Tell me, it's your choice. You can either label yourself crazy or stupid. Your own thought. See, if it so happens, my hand stands slapping me. Somebody comes to do something to me, I can take care of it. If my hand starts slapping me, what is the solution? Nothing, you're just crazy. <laughs> yes, you get slapped all the time. So most of the time, this is all that's happening to people is their own thought and their own emotion that's freaking them all the time. Who else is poking you? <laughs> when was the last time somebody poked you with a dagger? Hello? <laughs> when was the last time? Nobody ever poked you. You know, she's saying, no, even if you're in politics, nobody poked you <laughs> But you are busy poking yourself all the time. So it's up to you to choose the label, you're either stupid or crazy. None. <laughs> Would want to choose none. <laughs>